decided not to just to show you uh, to cut one piece but I could use a scrap of fabric there and a scrap of fabric there to cover them but I've decided to just go ahead and just cut another piece so I'm going to cut these bluey type flowers here because that's that's the uh, color scheme I'm using here so I'm going to you put my fabric um, on the board and once again I'm going to go right I've covered where the moon is going to go there and I've covered where the moon is going to go there so I only need a piece of fabric about that square so I'm just going to cut that out like that roughly again because I'm just using it as a rough fabric and I'm going to place place the fabric in here that I want back in here so we've got these colors I actually want the blues in the wings so I'm going to put that blue flower inside there so that blue flower is going to stitch into there all right girls now I'm going to go back over here to my sewing machine and I'm going to put it back underneath again with just the fabric floating on top of the hoop pop it in and as you can see we're up to stitches number four and once again we'll just go ahead and stitch There you go girls, this stitch here, this is uh, with stitches number four and it stitched the outline of the moon. So now we're going to have to trim. I guess this is where you're getting stuck about what do I leave and what do I take away. So let's have a look at that. What we're going to leave is we're going to leave this bit here. And we're going to leave these little bits here because all the rest have to be taken away. So once again, let's get our trusty little um, scissors and let's start. So we're going to go on this outline for a start so you will see what you, can, what you need to take away. Again, put your scissors at a 45 degree angle and, and uh, stitch, uh, cut close to the stitches without actually cutting the stitches. Again, don't move your hand, don't move your scissors, move your hoop. So always turn your hoop rather than your hand or your scissors because otherwise you're trying to cut like this and it's very very awkward. As you can see girls I'm reasonably close to the stitches here. I've got the scissors at an angle so we can see when I'm cutting that I'm cutting close but not cutting the fabric. I'm going to cut in there. This piece here is the piece we want so we're going to cut around here. And this is probably the confusing bit. What do I cut? What do I leave? So you have to look at the picture. And here you can see the picture here in the booklet of what you need to cut, what you need to leave and what you need to cut. So this is the piece I'm cutting out at the moment around the wings. Again, move my hoop, not my scissors. Come around the wings. I'm not being overly pedantic because I know there is going to be another piece of fabric over the top of that. I'm leaving the underneath fabric there. I'm not cutting that out. I don't need to remove that. So the block is just staying right where it is. Very, very awkward when we don't move our hoop. We use our hands to move around the board. Again, this piece is the piece we're going to leave. So we come around here and we go up along the side here. And now you can see that that's the piece in Darlene's picture that has been left behind here. So the next side, we can see we need to take this, leave this piece and leave this piece. So let's take this one out and let's see, have a look at our picture and see where we're up to. So we're going to trim this and trim this one. Well, I'm at an awkward angle so you girls can see what I'm doing so my hand isn't in your way. So we're leaving that and that and we can see we have to leave a couple of other things. We probably need to leave this piece, which is this piece here, girls. So this piece is the next piece. So we'll go in here again and we'll trim this piece here off. Okay, I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm trimming and what I'm leaving. Scallops are reasonably easy. Well, they can be reasonably hard depending on the scissors you have. Again, I've moved my hoop, not my hand and not the scissors. Around we go. And when we come back to here, we can see that, that looks pretty good. Now there's a little piece here that's been outlined very, very well. So obviously that needs to stay. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to punch a little hole in our fabric and once again just leave that behind and trim all the way around it. Try to move my hand out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. A little bit of pressure on the fabric so it holds up nicely for me to cut. And there we have it girls. That there was stitch lot number four. And there you have it against Darlene's book. We've got these pieces here and we've got these pieces here. According to Darlene, we've added the fabric over the air and stitched the step to tack down the fabric in place. We've carefully cut away the, cut away the excess fabric. Turn the page again. The next one now will be stitch the next step to outline the next area which will be the wave shape under the gray, under the dragonfly. Then we'll add the fabric over and stitch the tack down. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it back in the hoop and we're going to stitch the next lot of stitches which will be five. Stitch lots number five girls. Show us the next lot that we have to, next lot of fabric we will need to put in. As you can see girls it's stitched around here and around here now I don't actually want another fabric in here I want the backing throwing sewing showing through so I'm actually not going to place any more fabric in there I think it'll be too busy so I'm going to skip the next step step which would have been to tack down that roll of stitches and then trim the fabric so go ahead now if you want to and put down I don't know another piece of fabric again Make sure it's big enough to cover both pieces, stitch it and, and cut it out. I'm not going to, so therefore back over here to my sewing machine, I am going to skip, I'm going to skip this row of stitches. Sequence of stitches is number six. I'm not going to sew them because all they're going to do is tack down the fabric that's supposed to be in the wave. I'm not going to put any fabric in there so I'm going to stitch them by selecting number seven lot of stitches so I'm just going to skip them and go to number seven. Okay, so if you had stitched row, uh, row of stitches number six, you'd have fabric in here and in here. So you would trim your fabric here and here and then we're ready for stitches number Sorry, that was number six. So if you'd sewn stitches number six, it would have uh, sewn over those and you would have trimmed them. The next lot of stitches is number seven. And number seven says, uh, that's the wave. That's the wave where you cut the wave away. Carefully cut away the excess fabric around the shape. Stitch the next step to outline the next area, which is the wings of the dragonfly. So we are now up to number seven. And I'll put it in and it will show me where the wings of the dragonfly will sew. Ready, Mark? So, girls, we are on to stitch lot number seven, and it's going to outline where the wings are to be sewn. So now girls you can see that it's actually outlined the uh, dragonfly's wings. So we're going to cut some fabric for his wings which is uh, what Darlene has said here. Add fabric over the wings, stitch the tack down step and cut away the excess fabric. Fabric. So we've done number seven, we're going on to number eight and I've decided that I want my dragonfly in this beautiful dark purple. 
So I'm going to cut a piece that will fit over the wings. So the wings go here to here. And again, I'm just going to roughly cut it. I can find what I did with my scissors. Here we are. And make sure that I'm outside the wing here. And I'm going to make sure that I'm outside the wings here. I'm just going to cut up to here. Now you can quite, I'm quite happy for you to measure before you cut, girls. Some people like to use measurements. If that's the case, then you just get your tape measure and you go, I need to cut a piece that is at least six and a half inches by at least three inches. And mine is seven inches by four inches. So I know when I place the fabric over the wings that that, that is going to be caught. And I've done some lighter over here and some darker shading over here. So I've got light and dark shading in the wings. So one set of wings are going to be darker than the light set of wings over here. And back to the machine, put our hoop back on our machine. And again, I'm just back over here to the machine, put it back onto the machine. And we'll stitch the next lot of stitches, which is eight. And this will do the wings. There we go. see girls the wings have now sewn and we're going to just go along and we're just going to trim them as well so once again we get our trusty little scissors and again we're going to use uh, the, the hoop movement not our scissors to trim and I'm sorry if I'm harping on this it just will make your job so much easier if you turn your hoop and not your scissors or your hand right, into there I'm not going to be very very pedantic with this because some beautiful satin stitches are going to go over this so anything that's left where it shouldn't be, the satin stitches, normally in Darlene's beautiful designs, uh, cover any little mistakes you make. Now, the body of my dragonfly is going to be the same colour as his wings. I don't want uh, a different colour in his, in his body, so I'm not actually going to cut that centre part out where his head is. I'm going to leave that in this fabric because it's going to be covered up in a minute with the same colour fabric anyway and I'll show you what I mean by that got a little bit of pull on this fabric just to keep it nice and taut as I'm trimming I don't know whether you can see that very well girls I hope you can I'm talking about this little piece here I can trim that or I can leave it I'll trim it for you just to show you that you can now the next piece we're going to put this now back in the hoop because it now says Add the fabric over the wings, which we did, stitch the tack down, which we did, uh, put the fabric down, which we've done, and we've cut away the wings. The next one is, is the body section. Add fa fabric over the body section, section and stitch the tack down stitches to secure it in place. So, we can see that the body section is here, so we're just going to put a piece of fabric. It's just going to stitch a whole piece of fabric on there. So, we need a piece of fabric that's going to be big enough to do there. And that piece there is going to work just fine. So just cut these little excess pieces off, get rid of them, make sure we've got enough so that it goes into there. And we are going to end up with this piece here. This is what we're stitching now, this little piece here. You can do it in a different colour. You can do it in the same colour. It is totally up to you. Remember, girls, it is your design. It is, it is how you want it. Again, I'm just lowering the fabric nicely over that back into the machine and this is stitches number nine and this will stitch the body straight onto the rest of the dragonfly for us away we go and this won't take long to stitch because there's not a great big deal on it there's, there's, there it is girl stitching the body of the dragonfly Take that off and trim that fabric. You 
could have made that a different color if you wished. You did not have to use the same color as your wings. Thinking back on it, I should have made it in the lighter color, but never mind. And now we just once again punch a hole and we're just going to go and trim this all off neatly. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so you girls can see. I'm sure you've all done this in your applique classes. And if you haven't and you're new, I'm not a um, expert girl, so this is just how I do it. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm wrong, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm right. But this is the way I do it, and I love Darlene's designs because Darlene's designs actually hide any little imperfections that I, I do have in my in my <laughs> in my um, haste to get my blocks done. As I said, I've done 22 of them. I need to now do another 12 to get my granddaughter's quilt cover all sewn together. And I'll put the blocks on the table when I'm done so you can see that I've used the, the, the fabric from the flowers as the main focal point of each of the blocks. And then I've trimmed each block with a colour scheme that matches in those particular coloured flowers. Okay.